All right, hey guys. Today I am going to do a video review of Hoard, a wallet for your cash and cryptocurrency, as it says right here. Uh, Hoard is a very cool project. They basically want to uh, combine Venmo with a crypto wallet. So imagine Venmo meets bread or something along those lines. Um, and they basically want to make it incredibly easy and safe for, you know, any kind of user who may or may not be super experienced with crypto to be able to uh, access and trade and transact with thousands of different cryptos without having to go through a lot of the rigmarole that is often required in the current ecosystem. Um, so let's start off just by you know, talking a little bit about their website. Um, I like how clean it is. It's very easy to see what's going on. Um, it's got some nice visuals. It's a nice, it's a nice website. I like what they've got going on here. Um, now let's move on to the key value propositions. So, like I talked about, they're an all-in-one wallet, um, but they also will be an exchange. And um, well, they're building a decentralized exchange protocol, which is uh, supposed to be blockchain agnostic, meaning that it can. Uh, work for any number of blockchains, which is huge. Um, you know, so currently, you know, decentralized exchanges are only on one blockchain. So there is, you know, a couple for Ethereum. There's one for Waves. There's one for Stellar. But uh, Hoard is building a protocol that could enable there to be a Dex that trades assets from all of these, uh, which is very cool. And in the long run, it's kind of like what the decentralization movement really needs is to be able to easily utilize all blockchains uh, without having to uh, deal with too much friction moving between chains. Um, they also are going to have uh, a lot of portfolio aspects to their application to make it easier for people to manage their investments. Um, and very coolly, you're going to be able to use fiat. So you'll be able to send fiat to people like with Venmo and you'll be able to send crypto. Um, in terms of the portfolio, they're going to have automatic investing and portfolio rebalancing um, AI and bots so that if you're not a full-time trader but you want to manage some crypto and have a crypto portfolio, they can basically make it much easier for you to do that and you won't have to spend so much time doing it and it should allow for really good risk management for your average crypto investor. Um, they also, of course, are going to be focused on providing very cheap payments, and they want to allow you to do it with any currency to any currency, and eliminate middlemen in the process, reducing fees. Now, they will still, of course, take some fees, um, but it will be significantly less than current you know, legacy systems like Visa and MasterCard, etc. Um, and so it's good that they will have an income stream as a company because they'll be making money off transactions. But because of the decentralized architecture, they'll be able to do it with much less capital overhead. So it'll be good for them and good for the consumer. Um, got the multi-chain DEX protocol. Um, I already talked about this a little bit. Um, this is a very, very ambitious technology. So I'll be very, very impressed if these guys are able to make it happen, especially uh, in the timeline that they want to do it in. But they have a really strong team that I'll talk about later. And uh, I mean, this would be absolutely huge for crypto. And uh, they have this uh, liquidity aggregating uh, protocol um, marketplace type of architecture that they call Smog, um, like the dragon from The Hobbit. So I quite like that. It's a cool name. Um, you can tell these guys are very conscious of the crypto community and very interested in maintaining a lot of the principles that represent what you know, this whole movement is about. So they're going to have an open source code base and they're going to keep things as decentralized as possible and have as much access and ability for community to uh, contribute as possible, which is great. Um, I couldn't find it when I was doing my notes for this review, uh, but I seem to remember seeing them maybe on their Twitter saying that they were going to have 24-7 online support. I could be wrong about that. Um, but they do claim in their white paper, I believe, that it's going to be international, so I imagine multilingual, and they definitely have a strong focus on customer support, which is something that's very lacking in the crypto space, and they are dedicating a significant amount of their budget, I believe about 10%, to their um, 
to their customer support. Let's see if I can find that in the yeah, there's the um, the usage of all of the tokens or all the funds. Yeah, right here, token sale proceeds. Yeah, so customer support 10%, which is a good number, and it's good to see that. Um, they also claim that they're going to be hacker-proof with a very intense uh, cold storage um, solution with multiple layers of verification for extra security. And this will be up to the user if they want to actually enable this. So, you know, you can put it in place probably, I, I couldn't tell, but I imagine like you could, you know, have some of your funds be uh, dedicated as savings. And for those to be moved, you would have to go through significant security measures to actually move them, which is fantastic. And you'd also be able to have, you know, your, you know, spending money, your cash ready to move um, so that you can spend money freely and quickly without having to go through those security procedures for all of your transactions. Okay, does it have a working product? Um, they already have an MVP, which is fantastic, as you can see right here, available on the App Store and Google Play. Um, I do not have an Android phone. It seems like it's already public on the Android marketplace, but on the iPhone App Store, you have to... Um, you have to apply for access, which I did not realize until I started making this video. Um, so I did not, I was not able to do this in time for the video, but it's good to see that they've got it. They've been up and running since spring 2017, so they've been putting in work, and it's great to see that they waited until they had a solid product before they started to, um, you know, raise money. Well, raise it publicly. They got. Um, a significant chunk, 500k in private equity early on as seed capital to grow the team and start uh, working on the product. Uh, so the roadmap, um, getting there. Um, we we're just talking about it. They've been in action since spring of 2017, which is great. Um, one thing I would say is that the roadmap could be a little bit more detailed and specific. It's fairly broad. Um, it's quite ambitious to be able to make all this stuff happen in the time that they wanted to, but I like to see ambition, and they definitely have a strong team, so um, they could improve the roadmap, but it is what it is, and I think um, there's more details on exactly what they're doing in the white paper, but I'm not going to go into that in this video, so if you want to, I encourage you to go check out the white paper. Uh, let's talk about the token economics. And where were those? Yeah, right here. So their soft cap is 2 mil and their hard cap is 10 mil. Uh, 300 million supply, uh, 6 cents in the public ICO price, and they'll be raising with an ERC20, and I imagine eventually they will be doing a token swap. So those are pretty good numbers. It's a reasonable cap, 10 mil. Um, and 2 mil is a soft cap. It's good to see not such a huge discrepancy. There's some projects that have like a 3 million uh, soft cap and a 30 million hard cap, and it's kind of like, why is there such a huge difference between the two? Like, do you really need 30 million? Like, if you are willing to go ahead with the project with only three. So I like that they don't have such a big uh, discrepancy. In terms of how they're going to use the proceeds um, and how many tokens are being allocated, I love that they have most of it, 67%, going to the actual sale, and reasonable amounts, 13 going to the team, 13 going to the master nodes, and 7% of the reserve, so it's a really good distribution, uh, very, very generous, um, or rather not greedy, so I like to see that. And in terms of the token sale, token sale proceeds, pretty standard, um, nothing to really go into depth there, it's, you know, it'll do the job. Now let's talk about the token utility. I believe that is in the white paper. Um, yeah, I'll just talk about it. I've got notes here for it, and you can read about it yourself if you want to. So the token has a few utilities. Um, probably the two coolest things that it can do is they will use their token to wrap any asset conversion, which basically means that they're going to do an off-chain transaction for a lot of the smaller microtransactions. I think fairly similar to a Lightning Network type of thing, but I'm not a tech expert. 
but it sounds like it's kind of similar. So you do a lot of the smaller transaction off chain, which allows you to do cheap small transactions, which would otherwise clog uh, the chain if you did them on chain and would be too expensive. And the way it'll work is that hoard will be the medium through which. So let's say I think I understand it correctly. You want to use Bitcoin and someone else wants to receive Ethereum. You would send the Bitcoin and it would go through this off-chain uh, protocol and it would get converted into Hoard and then the Hoard would get converted into Ethereum and end up in the other person's Ethereum wallet. And I also believe that they are going to set this up to work with crypto to fiat and vice versa, uh, which is very cool. I'm not 100% if I understood that correctly. But that would be sweet. So you would be able to, say, go into a store and use your Bitcoin to instantly pay a merchant in U.S. dollars if you wanted to. And it would always go through Hoard. And the reason for going through Hoard is that the Hoard token would be responsible for powering this off-chain network that allows cheaper transactions. I hope I explained that well. Um, the other really cool utility it has is when they have this this um, multi-chain DEX protocol, they're going to allow people to create master nodes and stake and become liquidity providers or market makers and even make their own exchange um, and also have the potential to create zero knowledge ledgers, i.e. like private ledgers, uh, which is pretty fantastic. So it allows kind of anyone to get involved and be a part of the exchange business so you can earn some money if you have enough hoard tokens to operate as a node and help make the exchange ecosystem work by providing liquidity and staking to secure the network. And then on top of that, it will also um, you know, have some governance um, rights, so there will be some voting to be done on the direction of the project, uh, which is very common in, in good crypto projects, and it will allow you to access certain advanced functions and reduce fees. So that's why they call it hoard, because the more hoard that you hoard, that you keep, um, the more benefits you'll get, the cheaper and faster your transactions will become, and the more functions you'll have access to within the app. All right, let's talk about the team. Um, trying to keep this video a reasonable length, so I'm talking a little fast, but I hope that I'm being clear. Um, the team is very experienced, and they're very experienced in the very specific thing that they are doing, which is excellent. So Jason Davis is the CEO, and he was working at Wells Fargo as an interaction designer, meaning he was doing uh, you know, digital experience design, as it's called, in mobile specifically for mobile apps for wallets and payments. So he's basically doing exactly what he's doing now, um, except what they're doing now is going to be a lot more awesome than what Wells Fargo has on offer. So it's great to see that. Um, their CTO um, is also very tech oriented, which is great. You know, it means they're focused on the tech. And I think this shows by the fact that they've been building without having a huge amount of money. They got the 500K. And with that, that was enough for them to start building because they are going to be building it themselves and they're involved. Um, so this guy's got a lot of experience as a lead engineer. And also great to see is that he was very heavily involved in startups, um, which is great because obviously experience with startups is key for any startup. There's going to be all kinds of obstacles that come. And this guy spent five years you know, taking startup founders' ideas and turning them into a reality, as it says right here. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole team. I'll talk about one more and then a couple advisors. So this is their chief product officer, and he's basically in charge of designing the app and the product and making sure it works properly. And he has he also comes from Wells Fargo, so he's worked together with the CEO, which is good to see, and he's worked for Morgan Stanley, and he has a ton of experience doing exactly what he's be, going to be doing. User experience, interaction, user experience, interactive. So he's got fantastic experience for what they're going to be doing. Um, really uh, looks like a crack all-star team. In terms of their advisors, um, they don't have too many, which I actually like. You know, you see some ICOs that have like 15 advisors, and it kind of puts off the vibe that they're just like stacking them on to, you know, use them mainly for promotion, and they're probably not that involved in the project. But these guys just have a few key advisors. They got a couple of legal advisors. I'm not going to go over. They've got um, this guy Ian Gertler, who's the marketing and communications advisor and he's got a lot of good experience 
in the marketing and digital strategy um, field. You know, he worked for Cisco. He he looks he worked for IBM. He looks like he's a, a good guy that will be able to like social business enablement for IBM. He'll definitely be able to help lead them in their marketing. And from what I've seen so far in their digital strategy, um, they are doing a good job. They're very engaged. They're very active with their community. When I've tweeted at them, they've gotten back to me. They've retweeted some of my tweets. Um, so I like to see that. Um, and their other key advisor, Kyle Ellicott, is a extremely experienced tech advisor, which is fantastic. Um, so you know he's a founder of a tech accelerator um, for Internet of Things, which isn't necessarily exactly what they're doing, but I'm sure there's quite a bit of crossover. And if you go through his profile, you can see he has advised a ton of tech projects. Um, go Puck, it's a funny name. Um, yeah, so it looks like they've got, they picked a few key advisors that are actually going to be able to give them a lot of good advice and, you know, ideally guide them through the whole process. And so I think their team looks fantastic. They've also got a lot of experienced designers and engineers. I'm not going to go into them specifically, but they've got 30 plus team members, so you can go and check them out yourself. And they also have, oh, they have one more advisor that I wanted to talk about. Um, I don't have the page open, so I'll go get that. But this guy, Chris Mattern, was former head of mobile at Venmo. So really, like, they've got that super specific requirements needed for their project in their team and their advisors like they have people who have done exactly what they want to do and that's fantastic to see so that is my review of Horde um, I hope that this has been useful for you if it has please give it a like and a share and uh, go check out the Horde product project for yourself uh, thank you guys for tuning in and I uh, hope you have a good day alright see ya